Hi, Johnny Walsh here from Living Wilderness Bushcraft School. Um, today I'm going to do a video in the workshop and this is going to be the first in a series of videos about making your own equipment, making your own kit. Mm -hmm. that, uh, I do a lot of the time is when I look at a project, I try and think how I can provide that for myself. Same as you do when you're out in the woods and you're looking where can I get food from, where can I get materials from, where can I get shelter from, all the different aspects. I take the same look at equipment and gear. In the longer time scales, you're going to need to be able to, first of all, repair and mend the equipment you have and then learn how to replace it when those bits and pieces wear out. One of the items that is most fundamental to our well-being when we're out and about is our clothing. Now, not everybody's into making clothing, not everybody can make clothing, but when you actually go into it, it's not actually all that difficult. And what I suggest to people is that you learn one item at a time and you learn how to provide these things for yourself. Now, one easy thing to get started on is a, a hat, making yourself a woolen hat. Now, knitting, for all those who are feeling a little squirmy at the minute, is basically advanced knot tying, so don't worry about it. It's a really good skill to have. A knitting loom is basically a way of knitting without using needles. So instead of having two needles, which you transfer your work over and back on, you have a peg for each stitch. You cast on and you cast off in a very similar way as you would with your knitting uh, with knitting needles. Now I can't knit and I can't crochet uh, very well, but with one of these I can produce a very consistent knit and a very neat knit um, and produce hats, a hat like this, in maybe two to three hours. It's a quick way of doing things. They're lovely hats. I love woolen hats. They're a fantastic thing to have when you're out and about and you can make them to your own specifications. The way these looms work is you start off, you anchor your thread and then you'll make a loop around each one of these. This is called your E-wrap. And you carry that the full way around. Okay, so that's your first row. Now, you would bring this the whole way around and then you come back and you do a second round on each of them. Then you take your hook and you take the first, the bottom loop, and you cast it over the top. Once, you, once you've cast off the full way around, then you come back, you do another row of wraps, you cast off again, and this is how you knit up the thing. This is a commercially available sock loom. This is for knitting socks on so that you can make your own socks. Uh, it can also be used for mittens. And this has a movable block where you loosen this off and this block will slide forward and back so you can uh, gauge the size for your foot, for your hand, whatever it is you're making with it. What we're going to start off with is learning how to make a knitting loom. The spacing of the peg is an important thing. Uh, this is to do with the gauge, it, it would be the, akin to the gauge of your needles and the thickness of your wool. On both of these looms you can see there's a gap. Now the idea of this is that first the little increased amount of material at the top of each of these pegs stops your stitch sliding off just as it does on these nails here. Uh, the little groove in between allows you to get the hook in when you're taking your stitch over the top. The pegs on the bottom one are made from cotter split pins and the pegs on the top are made from masonry nails. Now I've made a lot of hats on, on, on each one of these and they both work really well. Um, I really like the cotter split pin. These can be bought in automotive stores, car repair places, those kind of things, maybe farm stores. They're not hard to come by. Uh, masonry nails can be uh, obtained in any hardware store. Now don't worry too much about the stitches and everything for the minute. I'll show that in the next video when we're actually making hats. In order to make this project you need a few bits and pieces. You're going to need your wood, you're going to need your pegs, you're going to need a drill for drilling the holes uh, and you'll need some way of cutting the circle. You don't need any special equipment to make this. Uh, if you have the tools use them. I'm going to use some here and show you a few different techniques so you, you can just see the different options you have. The simplest option of all of these would be a coping saw like this. Uh, these are quite cheap, easy to come by, nice and light, very handy for cutting out curves and shapes, that kind of thing. Another tool that people would likely have would be a jigsaw. Moving up from there, this is a scroll saw, which is basically a motorized version of one of these. Uh, you can get nice tight curves on it, not a tool that a lot of people would have. The other option is a bandsaw. To make the holes in the disc, you also need a drill. Now again, depending on whether you've powered the tools you have, work with what you got. 
we have two different types of hand operated drills here we have a battery operated drill uh, all of these will work fine your other option is a drill press if you have one of these in your workshop that's great these will make life uh, a bit quicker and a bit easier for you it's not a necessity by any means now the wood I'm going to be using is Baltic birch plywood because I have an off cut line around this piece is 19mm the other ones I was showing you was a, a one inch piece 25mm. Uh, I don't want to go any thinner than this. If you've got thinner plywood than this you can just laminate it by putting two pieces together and gluing it up and making one solid piece that you can cut your ring out of. Now once you have your ring cut out, the next thing we need to do is drill the holes. Now what we're going to do is drill the full way through. Uh, the reason for doing that is one, with plywood and with MDF and things like that, when you're hammering the pegs in, it can separate the layers, it can push the layers apart so that it actually splits. You can see here in this one where as the nails went in, as they reached towards the bottom, they began to push the layer so apart. By drilling the full way through, we'll prevent that happening and also then we can tap the pegs back in and that will give us an even height along the top. If you have a backer plate so that as you're drilling through the bottom of the workpiece is supported that will stop it uh, exploding out or blowing out the fibres like it has done here. Now if you're drilling these by hand with a bit and brace like this or with a hand drill you want to make sure that you're drilling perpendicular to your workpiece. Now, if you have a square, you can use this as a, as a site to line up by, just as a guide. And you want to make sure you look from this angle and this angle, two opposing angles to make sure that you're not leaning this way or this way. One of these can help you just adjust your site so that you know which way you're drilling. As you can see the blowout was kept to a minimum on the back of that piece. So we're going to drill the full way through and work our way around in this. A handy little tip is to just place your drill bit up against your workpiece and allow it to overlap a slight bit. Take a small bit of tape and place this around to mark your depth. This will act as a depth stop for you so you know not to drill too deeply. Now, next thing we need to do is take off the paper. Best way to do that is just to wet it, let it soak in for a minute and then scrape it off with a knife.
we've got the disc all sanded up, next thing to do is add the pins. Now with the sanding, all you really want to do is break the edges and make sure there's no snaggy bits for the wool to catch on. Anything after that is just up to yourself. So you just take out some of the saw marks and that kind of thing and leave it nice and smooth because it is going to spend quite a lot of time in your hands. With these split pins, in order for them to work nicely, what you need to do is kind of open them out. Right, so what we want to do is open up this part here so that when we bend it back it has a little gap and this will allow uh, your hook to stick into it. You orientate your pins in this direction so that the wool can't slide up and over uh, because it wants to pull into the center so this is the way you have to make sure that they all face. If some of them are a little crooked later on you can always just tweak them with a wood a pliers. to do with your loom is to put in a peg to tie off on so I just pre-drilled the hole and I have a slab nail here that I'm just going to tap in this you just want enough to wrap your wool around that once or twice to hold on and this will be your start and finish point of your loom next job is to make a hook this is one that came with the sock loom, the commercial loom, and this is one that I use myself. This is just a little uh, hand drill. I made this hook just out of a nail that I filed down and bent over with a pliers. And this just goes into this and screws in nice and tight. I have a couple of hooks already, so I don't really need another hook myself. So I'm just gonna demonstrate how you would make one. Um, this is a piece of hazel, dry hazel. Any uh, round branch, piece of wood that you want to use will work fine for this. You want it about something that will fit nicely in your palm. You can shape this, whittle it down to whatever shape you want. What we need to do is to shape this into our hook. So we're going to grind off the head of this and thin out the top of the nail on the grinder. This could also be done with, the, with a hand file, no problem. drop a little dab of super glue in into the hole and that will hold them nice and tight. Yeah, I tried to show you that you know work with what you got. If you got hand tools work with them. If you got a workshop like this work with it as well. So there's nothing wrong with using either. It can be accomplished with the very bare basics of tools. I'll put dimensions on the cutter split pins and the wood and the circle and the spacing and all of that below. If it's your first time finding my videos, click the button down below, hit like, share and subscribe if you want to. I'd love to hear all your comments, any ideas for projects that you'd like to see me do, give a shout as well. So thanks for watching, I'm Johnny Walsh from the Wilderness Bushcraft School and we'll see you next time. Bye.
Okay.